Hi, this is Patrick Rafferty of Brantford, and we'll be discussing the visualization framework that we've built for Oracle and DECA information discovery, showing you a quick demo, and basically adding some capabilities that the product currently doesn't have. We're gonna build a donut chart in about 15 minutes. So each of our visualizations is defined via an XML file and a JavaScript file. An XML file to indicate what are the various inputs and outputs of this visualization, and a JavaScript file that will actually handle the rendering of the visualization to the user. So if I flip over here, our visualization framework comes with a variety of templates to sort of aid you in your, um, in your visualization creation process. This is our template XML that gives you the ability to kind of show uh, the inputs and outputs of your visualization. So I'm gonna make a copy of this template. Start. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go through the process of enabling my donut chart, adding all the configuration I need. So my chart, so obviously I will want to have a single group by, um, maybe a metric that I'm actually showing uh, to my user. And here I'm just filling out various information about the donut chart. If I go to configure it, the name will be what actually I select uh, in my preferences tab to show my visualiza visualization. Here's where I specify my script file, a renderer, and the class name contained within that file, renderer. See here, I have a variety of options related to configuration. So in this example in the template, I give the user two queries they can specify here, uh, a query for the visualization, and then something maybe after they click in uh, to show further detail on my table. So you can think of this as, I show a donut chart, and then when I click in, I show the underlying uh, the underlying data behind that particular segment of the donut chart. So we're going to keep things simple uh, in the interest of time. We're going to go only with a single query here uh, for our configuration. I have the ability to add in information to help my user who's actually going to use this. So I'll put in a little note here that says this is a donut chart. Group by click save. And now I have a completed document. And this is essentially saying that I'm going to have a single query. Uh, later on in future videos, we'll get into additional preferences and metrics and different abilities that the framework has. But for now, we're just going to keep it simple. Show a single metric, a single group by. Uh, not worry about too many options that we're going to give the user just in the interest of time. So I've taken this XML file and I've created it in a folder that has just been predefined inside of our uh, Oracle and DECA Studio instance, and so that the Portland knows to pick up this information. The second step is to create the JavaScript file. So similarly to how we have a template XML, we also have a template JavaScript. So this gives you the ability to kind of have a starting point as well as, a, as, well as highlight all the different pieces of functionality we have in this framework. Um, so initialization, reloads, uh, issuing uh, JavaScript before we do a query, after we do a query, exports, data refinements, all the kinds of things you'd expect in a visualization framework. Uh, we provide this template to sort of help the user get started. So again, I said I was going to create a donut renderer.js. So here I'm just going to go through and create that file to get started. I am going to my class had on this XML here previously, donut renderer, donut renderer. I'm just kind of clicking save periodically as I go through. You can use any kind of editor you want. I'm just happy to using Notepad++ plus plus here, uh, just in the interest of simplicity. And you'll see here that we basically give you uh, some, some variables set up, and then we prompt the user to add their SVG visualization uh, right here at the, at the end of view shell appending it. So now what am I trying to do? I'm trying to create a donut chart. So one framework that we really like, really like here at Branchford is D3. So I'm just gonna go out to the D3 site, pull some sample JavaScript from, uh, from there about donut charts, and then use that as the basis for my visualization. So we head out to that site, and we can pull the D3 chart, the D3 donut chart. You'll see it comes with a real small, tight, concise piece of JavaScript that helps do the rendering. So we're just going to use that as our starting point. Obviously, the data that we'll have will be different uh, than what we see here. And I'm just going to go ahead, and for now, I'm just going to paste it right in here. 
uh, underneath some of the other plate. It all taps in so it's a little bit easier to read. First thing I notice here, D3 example uh, is going to be taking my SVG and appending it to the body of my HTML document. That's obviously not what we want to do. Um, we want to do it sort of in the context of a portlet that we've set up. So I'm going to take this little snippet here from my from the template, copy and paste that, so that we put the visualization in the right place. I'm actually going to keep some of the width and height type calculations that they did uh, in the example. I'm going to go ahead and keep those. So I'm going to remove the step here that's in the slide previously. So you have that width, height, and radius. And as I go down, I can kind of see how they're building this visualization out. And so they were loading their data from CSV, so obviously I don't want to do that. I'll be getting the data straight out of index. This is visualization post query. This is the function that gets called after I've already issued my query and I've got my data serialized to JSON ready for display in the front end. And you'll see it's get past a single object called data. And I'm able to use that data object to get the data that was retrieved from Indeca. So rather than doing a data dot for each, as you see here, I've got a whole structure in place to return my records uh, to the user. So I'm just going to use that as my sort of point here rather than the data. Let's call it my data equals data. That's the model map. And you see this return name. When I actually write the query, my return statement will actually be the key that I use here. So I'll use um, my, my results. And I will replace the previous references to data with my data. So I'm not going to do a table post query for half of the story. What I'd like to do here uh, in terms of my sample data and using my donut chart is I'm just going to plot the number of crimes uh, in the city of Chicago, and I'm going to use as my group by attribute uh, the name of the community, the name of the neighborhood. So you'll see here that the previous examples was doing age, you know, population by age buckets. So we're going to change that slightly. And um, and use our own metrics. So I'm just going to say we're going to call that total. Something to keep in mind that when you go to write the query, you want to make sure that you use the name total uh, in your query. And call the community. Let's change that. This is basically you know how am I showing my data? Uh, showing my data in here. So I've now taken this D3 example and kind of made it my own. Uh, final step here, just to give it a title. So we have some, some smarts built in here um, to sort of put an appropriate title for your chart. For right now, just to a uh, surprise by community. Quite a bit of functionality in here to allow users to sort of do less coding. Uh, more time visualizing. So I'm going to do a quick example. As you have everything here that uh, you would expect, you know, the ability to refine outside the visualization and have it affect your your chart. Uh, the ability to refine within that visualization. We're just going to keep it simple right here, and um, you know, a little bit of wave over capability. So when someone comes in and does a mouse over, I can call this function and instead of having to worry about oh how do I you know to show more information. Early. I don't have to worry about that. I can just say so Q-tip player. I can have it say whatever I want. Say I want to show the number of times in there. And now I'm going to the actual number. This way, when I wave over a certain section of the chart, I can obviously see what community it is, but then I can also get the information about what the actual number of crimes is in the total. Um, and then also don't forget, mouse out, apply that thing. It's an example of some of the um, functionality that we built in uh, the framework to let developers spend less time 
I'm in the code and in the weeds and more time just turning around and doing really quick visualizations really fast. So that's the JavaScript and that's the XML configuration. Now we're ready to go ahead and configure this inside of Indeka Studio. So I'm going to turn around and I'm going to come into Indeka Studio. I just pre-built a page out here where I'm going to have my donut chart sit. I can click add component. And if I scroll down here to the bottom, I'll see my Branchburg data visualization program. I can drop that guy on. We'll see no visualization type selected. Please go to preferences and configure a type. So I can go into my preferences. I'm going to select donut chart. And now I get this information, this basically this dynamic GUI built on what my XML file specified. If you remember back to the beginning when I have the XML file, I said this is a donut chart, one group by one metric as a tooltip. You'll see it actually come through uh, into the EQL query. I have the ability to specify a collection that I want the various interactions to affect. So this is my, my crimes collection. So when I, if I do a navigation refinement from the chart, I know that it's supposed to affect the crimes collection, the crimes data set uh, inside Studio. So here I can specify my query. Again, I'm just looking for one group and uh, one metric. I'm going to call this my results. Remember, this is going to match what we saw when we actually coded into our JavaScript, my results.records. With the account, I'm going to say that's its total. Again, just kind of matching the JavaScript. I'm going to do my community name and I'm going to call it community. Let's say it's from crimes. And I'm going to group by. I did. No, I should be ready to go and ready to uh, see what I got from a from a donut chart standpoint. So I click save, submit my preferences, preferences updated successfully. Now I'm going to head back over to the studio and hopefully see my chart pop up. And the donut chart will hopefully load. Come back. There you go. And now I can see basically this beautiful color wheel of all the different crimes that I've seen in the city of Chicago. Um, this is a partial data set, but you see I'll be able to wave over, um, see that change as I go. The numbers are matching symmetrically. There's obviously a lot of noise in there. Um, so what I can do is I can come in and choose a ward, um, a ward being a collection of neighborhoods that we have here in Chicago. I click Submit. And you'll see how my chart automatically updates to show all the neighborhoods within that ward, West Town, Lincoln Park, Logan Square, etc. No coding. I didn't have to change anything or... Uh, handle this case it kind of all happens for you so we'll be continuing to build on this example as time goes on but just wanted to show you how quickly and easy it is uh, it is to build these visualizations in branch birds visualization framework that sits inside oracle and deca information discovery thank you for your time